Hello, I'm Bogdan Nahailu. Welcome to our latest interview for Kiev Post. Uh, I've got a rather different guest today from a different part of the world, uh, not America, not Europe, uh, but nonetheless part of the democratic world, down south, a long way from here, but close in values to us, we hope, and that's Australia. I'd like to welcome James Bailu, who um, I read is an Australian activist, investor and writer. Welcome, James. Thank you. You've just come back from Kharkiv and you've witnessed uh, the terrible attacks, the most recent ones, the missile attacks. Uh, so first of all, what brought you to Ukraine this time? Uh, what brought me to Ukraine was to continue my e effort, which has been going since 20, mid-2022, to help people in Ukraine and help the armed forces um, with supplies and, and um, encouragement uh, and to, to come back here and be here and do, do what I could do. And, and the, the, best, the best way to help begins with actually understanding and seeing on the ground. So you've got to come here and see things and then you can figure out how to help. Okay, James, you're, you're from Australia, a yep. long way away, as we say. Obviously, through the media, you've, you were following what was happening here and how the war started the, the, the uh, major attack in 22. But has your uh, view of Ukraine, your understanding of Ukraine changed uh, in the last two years since you've been coming here? Uh, fundamentally, no. It's been very consistent around um, uh, f fighting, fighting for freedom, and fighting for the for the land, and fighting for the history, and fighting for the country. And I think that 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 fundamental truth has been consistent the whole the whole way through. Uh, it hasn't changed, and I think um, I think people have got tired. Uh, I think yeah. um, Ukraine the, fatigue, war fatigue. Well, people here have got tired, um, and and yeah. I think um, that. Uh, there's, there's, there's fraying around the edges politically in terms of satisfaction with the leadership, um, but um, I think the fundamentals haven't changed. What got you interested in Ukraine in the first place? Uh, I think everybody, you know, everybody interested in freedom and liberty and, and um, the, the similar values was in, in the world was interested at a certain point when the, when the invasion happened. Um, uh, I was... Um, so I was, I was very interested, very interested then. Um, felt I needed to come here, uh, and I'd also been to, to um, Russia in two thousand um, and nineteen in, in elite circles in Russia, and so I was shocked that the people I knew in Russia could be indirectly uh, involved in in what had happened. I see. Now tell us in Australia, was there then in twenty two much interest in uh, what happened here and? How has that changed? You, you've alluded to fatigue. Well, I think there was an enormous interest in it when the invasion happened because it was all new and shocking and it was, it was the horrors of um, the worst kinds of ho dark horrors of, of um, 20th century war um, rearing its head up again and, and in, in Europe and, and that was meant, meant never to happen again and it was happening and I think it, it, there was a huge amount of interest in Australia um, around and the war was new. Uh, I think a, as the war has progressed, uh, the interest has diminished and diminished. Um, and uh, the, with the war in Gaza, it has, has completely stolen the headlines and, and, the, and the interest. Uh, and, um, and so it's di diminished even more. You, uh, as an individual and as a businessman, are helping in your own way. Uh, what has the Australian government done over the last two years to help? Uh, the Australian Australian government has committed about one billion Australian dollars worth of aid uh, over the last two years, um, and most of that aid was committed by the previous government in Australia very early on in the, in the war, and the, the new government has made minimal commitments beyond that, and recently made a commitment for a hundred million Australian dollars uh, about a month ago. Is that on paper, or is that is it actually reaching? No. Richard Miles, the Defence Minister, came to Lviv and had a meeting and, and a ceremony, and he made that commitment um, pretty pretty formally. Exact detail that's been spelled out, and I'm not clear. We reported on uh, uh, the issue of the uh, helicopters that had sort of expired, should we yes. say, uh, in terms of the, the 
uh, duty uh, and w worthiness. Uh, what's happened to that? Uh, that? Is that no longer an issue? I think that her helicopters have been dismantled and, bur and being buried. Uh, there's, there's no okay. coming back. The story is buried. Okay. The, well, the story's not buried because I think it's a it's a scandal. They could have um, they could have given them to the to Ukraine and said, look, it's your problem how to fix them, yeah. and if you want to use them, it's your at your risk. Right. And obviously, flying a helicopter in war is very risky to begin with. So yeah. um, you don't you don't need to. It's not like commercial airline. Um, a commercial airline flight, they could have, if you can't one of them, they could have given them. I think I'm not an expert on the issue uh, of the helicopters, but my, my understanding is that the request for the helicopters came after they were already starting to be dismantled. Um, right, too late in the day. Yeah, but so but they, they should have been proactive. They should have said, here, here, here you go, rather than throw them away. You can have I know them. some members of the Ukrainian diaspora were uh, pressing on this issue. But uh, obviously their voice wasn't strong enough. It wasn't strong enough, no. Okay. And um, quite recently, in relative terms, Australia opened an, an embassy here. And no, no. What's happened to it? No, the Australian, Australia, like a lot of countries, shut its embassy at the beginning of the war um, when Kiev was under threat. And, um, but unlike about 60 other nations, Australia has, has not reopened its embassy. So this is, Australia is a real outlier. Uh, in the Western Western world at the moment, in not having embassy open, the, um, there is an ambassador um, to U Ukraine, and the ambassador sits in Warsaw. And the the, the claimed um, reason is that Kiev is too high a security risk. Well, okay. Well, we're here. Uh, as you see, life goes on despite uh, the threats. Impressions from Kharkiv in the last days, uh, uh, terrible sights as we've seen on TV from even Kiev. But you've seen. Well, it's just the damage yourself. Yeah, look, it's a really big shock because you're still in the same country, and you uh, um, and you come from um, Kiev or you come from Lviv, uh, the, the two other two big cities, and and you you go on a, a, a five hour train ride and in Kharkiv, and the the, the the whole demeanor of people is different. Um, it, it's you know it's it's serious and worried. Um, the the, um, the lights all there's no lights in the evening, um, so it's like a Gotham City at night. Um, you know, there's traffic lights, but that's about it. All the building what, lights. What did you sense about the spirit of the population? Discouraged, uh, demoralised? No, or I still, think still I th strong. I think strong and extraordinarily resilient. And that um, uh, I was at the the scene for the the hypermarket attack um, about an hour or two after the attack. So when the fire was still burning and the smoke was going up and and the the, the the, 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 the complete scene of wreckage, but if you come back a hundred meters to the to the main street, which was it was down in a in a centre, come back to the main street, people are still getting in and out of cars and going about their business and touch, crossing the street with their kids as if as if nothing had happened. Yeah. And I think the hor the horrible thing about being in a, a city subject to these missile attacks, where there can be no warning because it's one minute twenty seconds right. away to launch. Um, is that people are so used to the carnage, they just get on with their life. Well, I wasn't hit, so... Very what, what should Australians, and for, for that matter, North Americans, know about uh, the situation in Ukraine, as you've just witnessed it? Well, I think the, the, the biggest thing I would say to people who take an interest in Ukraine uh, is come here, um, and it's safe to come here um, it, it, for, for nearly all of the country except near the front. Uh, it, it's safe to come here. It's, it, it's as safe as anywhere. Yeah, and if you sounds... if you're interested in Ukraine, you don't need to read about it in the in the in the internet on the internet or have me tell you about it. You you can you can come here and see it for yourself and and spend some time here and meet meet some Ukrainian contacts and find a way to help and find a way to get involved and do things. And um... do you think an Aust your average Australian should care about what's happening in Ukraine? Well, I think the average Australian should care, but whether they do care is two different things. But they should care because I think Ukraine is, um, it's a far from perfect democracy, but it is fighting for liberty and freedom and a dignity of the human spirit. And I think um, against a, a, an evil, evil totalitarian regime, and I think Australians should care about that kind of fight because um, Australia could find itself in that kind of fight in the future. Right. And if Australia hasn't been a good ally, hasn't, who's going to help Australia? Any, uh, we have to uh, wind up now, but any final thoughts, any messages you'd like to convey to, to our viewers? Look, I think um, I, I go more than it 
come here, I'd say it's inspiring to be here. Uh, the resilience of people, the courage of people, the, the service of people, the, the the commitment to a common cause. It's 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 um it's it's possibly the most inspiring place in the world right now. So it's a good place to visit. Thank you very much, James Bailu, uh, our Australian guest. Uh, thank you for uh, reminding us of Australia's existence and its contribution and support for Ukraine. And we thank you personally and those like you who support Ukraine at this difficult time for all of us. Thank you. All the best. Thank you very much. Bogdan Ahailo signing off for Kyiv Post.